Well, I wonder whether today you are here because it's the norm or whether you have done something different today. Maybe you came to church in a different, uh, different route or maybe uh, you've come here for the first time. Uh, maybe you have had something completely different for breakfast. Whatever it is, generally we follow a pattern in life, don't we? We generally do the same things. We get up the same side of the bed and get out uh, and, uh, and do the same things, often in the same kind of order. But one of the things that uh, in our series on patterns that, uh, that I think that we're mostly aware of is the negative patterns in our life. That, that's what we're really conscious of because the good patterns we're glad about, we're not really wanting to change those, but we really do want to change some things in our life that actually um, that, that we, we, that frustrate us with ongoing for some things in our lives, um, and they'll all be different for each one of us, but there'll be some persistent patterns of negative behavior that we have tried and tried and tried to change. And uh, so today I want to talk about how we can um, start the process and uh, see the the keys to actually changing long-time, long-term, persistent uh, negative patterns in our life so that we can actually change them and be able to obviously put uh, put new patterns uh, in their place. And, uh, and so that's, that's key uh, for us uh, with regard to that. Um, I, d- I don't know about you, but I find that things in my life so often are cyclical. In other words, I start off with good intentions, and then I fail, and then I feel guilty, and then I start again with good intentions, and then I fail, and then I'm feeling guilty again. I don't know if any of you can relate to that, but it is a cycle that we go through um, that, that in our desire to change, but often we are not knowing how to practically bring those changes into place. And sometimes there are some small things that can actually tr- trigger that change, and, uh, and can, can end up with some behavior or some pattern of behavior that you would like to stop. So, for, for example, for me, one of the things that I do is I bite my nails. And um, I, I go through stages where I'm able to and I concentrate and think, right, not going to do it. But um, what, what is a trigger for that so often is, is my teeth. And, um, and, and it starts off just with a little nick on my nail, and then of course I put it to my mouth just to kind of smooth it off, and of course it starts a pattern, and, um, and hence the, the reason. So I blame my teeth, of course. It's not my fault. How could it ever be my fault? <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is often there's something, isn't there, that triggers a, a thing, and then we're into a pattern, and uh, we think, how can we get out of, out, of the, out of those patterns? And of course, we can go from, uh, from small things to big things. But obviously, many of us in our lives, we've got major things in our life that are, uh, have become quite life-controlling and we struggle with. And so uh, today, I believe God wants us just to, to look at this uh, a little bit. Now, Paul the Apostle uh, understood this same thing in uh, Romans chapter 7 and verse 15. He said this, I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do the very thing I hate. Paul understood that there were things that he wanted to do, and even though he had the desire to do them, he was unable to do them on a consistent basis. And there were things that he didn't want to do, and yet found himself doing them. And so that's what Romans uh, 7 talks about. And of course, in Romans 8, he comes out of that what seems quite a depressing uh, passage, but yet a very realistic passage where Paul is talking about his struggles 
Romans 8 obviously gives us the hope that, uh, that in Christ that we can do all things, that we can change and we can find the pattern through him. So <clears throat> today I want us to talk about a, a path, a way of being able to gain victory in these areas in our life uh, where we have got some persistent negative patterns that we would like to see changed. And the first one is we need to discover our pattern of negative behavior. We need to discover the pattern of our temptation, discover what is it that actually causes that temptation uh, to happen. And the reason for that is, is because we are all unique. We have a, a unique voice pattern. We have a unique um, uh, you know, when, when we, we talk, we have a, even the way we walk, we have various uh, patterns. We have, um, uh, you know, a heartbeat. It has a different pattern. For each one of us, our heart beats slightly different. We have uh, in, in thumbprints and, and the way we are. We are made unique. And so we have, when we are susceptible to temptation and to negative patterns, we have a unique pattern. We have a unique way of being tempted. So in other words, what tempts me might not tempt you. There are some things that maybe tempt you that I would think, that doesn't bother me, I'm not in the slightest bit interested, and vice versa. So in other words, we are, there are some unique patterns in, in the way that our makeup is that causes us to trip, that causes us to, to fall and to fall repeatedly. Proverbs 4 says, plan carefully what you do, avoid evil and walk straight ahead, don't give one step off the right way. Uh, in other words, it's trying to say, plan ahead, think ahead, think about the, the, the dangers, think about the pitfalls, think about where, where you keep falling and the reasons behind it. I want to say to you, Satan knows what gets you. Satan already knows your pattern. He knows how to tempt you. He knows what's going to trigger uh, those emotions, those feelings, those desires in you. And, uh, and so we've got to be wise and think, well, wouldn't it be good if I realized what triggers my negative pattern? I think that's a bit of wisdom there, isn't it? To kind of analyze your own life, analyze where it's... And so I just want us to quickly look at those. We need to ask ourselves five questions when we're trying to discover the pattern in our life that's causing us to fall. And the first one is, is to ask ourselves, when am I most tempted? There will be a certain, um, certain time when you are more uh, susceptible to temptation than others. Uh, it might be a particular day of the week, yes, um, and so there's certain days where you feel vulnerable. There's certain, uh, maybe it might be a certain time of the day. It could be in a morning. It could be on an afternoon. It could be on an evening. It could be late evening. It could be any time. Thinking through when is the time that I am most susceptible to actually to, uh, to be in, in a, a vulnerable state. Where am I weak at what time? The other one is to ask yourself where Am I most tempted? Where, where is the places that I am most tempted? It might be in the home. It might be in the bedroom. It might be in your computer. It might be at the workplace. It could be any one of those uh, situations, yes? It might be that you're at a friend's house. It might be that you're in the garage. Whatever it might be, there's a place where you find the most temptation and you feel the weakest because there's certain things that trigger that, uh, that connect things, and, uh, and so it's worth knowing those things. Thirdly is to know who uh, is with you when you are most tempted. Who are you with when you're tempted? Now, you might ask, well, I'm on my own. I'm alone. There's nobody around me. That's when I'm most tempted. It may be when you're with certain friends, and certain friends lead you down a certain path. Uh, you get in with people or connect with people, and that relationship of just being with them means that you end up doing things that you don't want to do because of that connection, yes? 
It may be that you lose your temper around certain people. So in other words, you go into this negative behavior when you're around certain people. It could be parents, it could be children, it could be somebody at work, it could be your boss, it could be any number of people. So think about who are you with when you're in this negative behavior, when you're being tempted to do what you don't want to do. And fourthly is to ask yourself, what temporary benefit are you getting from that, uh, from that temptation, from that, that negative pattern, from that unwanted pattern uh, that, 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 that you've got? Now, the thing is, is to remember is you wouldn't do it if there wasn't something in it for you. There's always pleasure in sin. There's always pleasure in, 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 in a pattern that we don't want. There's always something. There's a, there's a reward. There's some benefit that we find from that. And it's worth asking yourself, when, when, you, when you fall into temptation, when you give in to that, to that pattern, what is it that you're actually um, uh, you know, realizing that you benefit from. And I think it's worth analyzing that. Hebrews 11.25 says, there is pleasure in sin for a short time. In other words, there's always a pleasure attached, even though there's going to be long-term pain. Although there's going to be long-term consequences as a result of that, what seems like a quick fix, a, a, a nice pleasure at the time. And if it wasn't pleasurable, of course, we wouldn't do it. There's always uh, a benefit. So in other words, with every kick, there's a kickback. Uh, with every pleasure, there is a long-term pain. But ask yourself, what are those temporary benefits, pleasures that you're getting out of it, yes? It might be that it makes you feel important. It may be that it makes you feel valued. It may be that it makes you feel comfort. Maybe it makes you feel that, uh, that, that you're excited. Maybe it gives you a sense of comfort. Or maybe it gives you a pleasure, a release um, of emotions that, uh, that, that you enjoy. It's worth asking ourselves that question, what benefit do we get from it? It's a temporary benefit, but there has to be a benefit as a result of it. And it's worth analyzing that in your life. And uh, fifthly, how do you feel right before you're tempted? How do you actually feel before you're tempted? It is important to recognize the emotional triggers in our life that set that pattern off on us. Yes, it's so important to do that. <clears throat> and it may be that you, you realize that when you're you're out there that, it's that, that, that one of the emotions that you, that's been released is because <clears throat> um, you're tired, you've got fatigue, or you're, you're, you're lonely, or whatever it might be. There's some aspect to it that actually triggers it, and it kind of triggers the emotion and sets you off down a negative path. So on your handouts, you have a little quiz. And on that little quiz, I've put <clears throat> uh, the... the um, the, the different aspects to, um, uh, to our makeup and uh, to the temptations that we face and to understand how susceptible we are to, uh, to, to going down a negative path. <clears throat> and so the first one is, uh, is on about the physical, your physical well-being. And asking yourself, how do you feel physically? Do you feel exhausted or do you feel energetic? Do you feel that you're in shape? Do you feel that you've got kind of, physically you're feeling good? And on that, put a, a scale of four. If you're in tip-top shape and everything's going well, put obviously a zero <clears throat> if you've had to be carried in this morning. Um, so just put, put kind of where you sense you are uh, in your physical, on your emotional. Uh, are you discouraged? Are you feeling pessimistic? Are you kind of feeling... Um, you know, negative about things, or are you feeling energetic? Are you feeling encouraged and optimistic about the future and about today and about what's happening in your life? Again, and uh, put yourself on a scale. What about mentally? Are you feeling bored? Are you feeling discontented? 
Or are you feeling challenged and feeling uh, contented? Are you feeling that you are that, that mentally that, that things are good, that you're learning and you, 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 you're sensing that you've got a good mental health awareness about yourself? But what about spiritually? Where are you spiritually? Do you feel dry? Uh, do you feel like that, that, you, that you're withered? Do you feel like you need to kind of uh, have some get up and go in your spiritual life, what's happening with your devotions, those kind of things? Um, or right, do you sense that you're growing and that you're hearing from God and your, your prayer life is vibrant and, you, you know, those kind of things put yourself again on a scale. What about geographically in terms of relationships? Are you close to those that, are, that love you and encourage you and, and invest into your life or are you geographically distant because being apart from those uh, that, that, that are in your life that love you and care for you and encourage you, it, that, that geography makes a difference. So being separated uh, geographically or being near together uh, helps as well. So put yourself on a, on a score. Are you sensing that you feel insecure or unsure about yourself or about your life? Do you feel secure or confident um, uh, about the future, about, uh, about yourself? What about um, uh, hurts? Are you feeling that you're hurting? Are you feeling that you've been deeply wounded? And, uh, and we all get deeply wounded and hurt at times. And so where are you on that scale? Have you, have you come through that other end? Are you feeling, yes, I'm feeling uh, vibrant, I'm feeling loved, I'm feeling understood, I'm feeling forgiven? Um, you know, how are you feeling on that? Put yourself on a scale of whether, on whether you're feeling hurt or loved, uh, on being whether you're feeling bitter or angry at people, or whether you're feeling happy. Uh, have you forgiven people? Are you sad? You're happy? And just go, go through those uh, aspects to it. And then when you've done all of them, what I want you to do is to tot up the total. If you've got all fours, then your total will be 40. If you've got all zeros, you'll have... Well done, excellent. If you've got all ones you'll have 10. If you've got all twos, you'll have 20, all threes, 30s. If you've, obviously, I'm expecting you to all have a mixture. And so the reasoning behind this is that this is just for you and your personal uh, uh, help you, hopefully, uh, in analyzing where you are uh, in, in your uh, uh, health towards um, recovery, towards getting things uh, well. If you're between 35 and 40, well, then obviously you've got it all cracked. You're, you've got it all together. Things are going well. Uh, you can kind of give yourself a pat on the back if you're in between the 35 and the 40. The only thing I would say to you, though, is if you're feeling proud about that, then <laughs> um, pride comes before a fall. So you've got to be very careful, okay, even if you've come out well on that. <clears throat> if you're between 25 and 35, well, <clears throat> you're, in a, you're in a kind of a, a, a thing where you are, uh, you, 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 you're needing to do some improvement. There needs to be some, some things dealt with in your life. Um, you are more vulnerable than you realize that you're vulnerable. And, uh, and so it's just something to be aware of. If you're in the 15 to 25, well, then you are in serious trouble and uh, you do need to do something about it very quickly and analyze the various areas of your life physically mentally emotionally spiritually relationships those kind of things in your life it is important that you look at them now of course if you're in the naught to 15 you are in a crisis and maybe today you might I've put higher scores, but thinking, I feel in a crisis. I don't want the person next to me to know that I'm in a crisis. Um, and I understand that. But I want to say to you, realistically, get counseling. Get some good Christian counseling. We have Christian counselors uh, locally that are really brilliant and will help you. Now, can I just say on that note, we all need counseling at times. So there's, we, you've got to understand we are all broken people. We are all dysfunctional in some aspect of our life. And so although we might look at other people and think they've got it all together, it's amazing when you talk and you get close to people how 
the, the hurts and the difficulties and the things that are going on in pre people's lives. It is so important that we actually deal with this. Get some good counseling um, if you're in that, uh, that situation. Amen? <clears throat> um, Ephesians 4 and verse 27 says this, Do not give the devil a foothold. And that's why when we're looking at these things, is we're trying to say, they might, you might look and you think, oh, well, there's only a little area. I want to say to you, the devil's only looking for a little area. It only needs a small area for him to get a foothold. In other words, it's a bit like when, I mean, obviously we're, we're seeing a lot on warfare at the moment with Ukraine and Russia's aggression. But let's say an army is trying to, uh, to take over an island as... Um, as, as the, the, they did in the um, Second World War, the Americans were trying to get onto Japan and to, and to win. One of the things that they had to do is they had to get a beachhead. They had to get onto the beach, they had to get a right little small piece of land, but once they'd got that little piece of beach, they could start to advance and take more and more ground. And that's what the devil does in our lives. He wants to get a little area and then he just advances and it just increases and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually he is controlling your life. And so we've got to be uh, aware of that and protect ourselves uh, from that. So we need uh, to discover uh, our, our <clears throat> uh, lives and we need to defend our heart because that is the issue above everything else, defending our heart. Thirdly, we need to depend on God's help. In other words, we need to learn to pray about the situations in our life. Now, I don't know about you, but I've often prayed about some of the issues in my life, and they've still not changed. So I'm not saying it's the only thing to do, but I am saying it is one of the things that you need to do. Yes? Because when you pray about it, God helps you with those things, gives you the opportunities to get out of things, and helps you to understand things. But we do need to depend on God's help in this thing. And Matthew 26, 41 says this, Keep alert and pray, otherwise temptation will overpower you. It is important that we have not just daily times of prayer, but it's important that we have repetitive times of prayer throughout the day. Uh, when I spoke uh, a while back on the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer for many years has been used by many organizations, many um, you know, Christian groups as a pattern for praying through the day. Um, you know, starting off with our Father and just coming to Him and recognizing that He is the Father, that He has blessed us, that He's uh, and just having that kind of getting out of bed with gratitude and thanksgiving. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And so using that um, uh, through, you know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, and thinking about the name of God and, and doing that um, at breakfast time, for example. Bless God's name at breakfast time. And um, do you know what I'm trying to say? Mid-morning, remember uh, what life is all about and list your needs and asking God for things and, and, and just going through. So what I'm saying, there is a pattern, but it's important for us to also pray microwave prayers. In other words, when something comes, we go, Lord, help. In other words, just a quick prayer, but it's a prayer of saying, Lord, I desperately need your help at this moment in time. And it's important for us to realize that, that May Day prayers, SOS prayers, God listens to. And he heard them, whether it was David, whether it was Daniel, or whether it was Paul, whoever it is, when they prayed their SOS uh, prayers, God heard them. We need to be, to be doing that. Uh, Psalm 50 says this, call to me when trouble comes and I might save you. Yes? I will save you. So we've got to call on God. We've got to learn this. It's something that we learn. Jesus faced temptations. In fact, he, learned, he, he, he understands us because he faced the same temptations we faced. He faced it. So whatever temptation you face, you've got to understand that Jesus 
also faced it. The difference is, is he never sinned. Just because you're tempted is not a sin. It's when you give in to the temptation that it becomes a sin. So in other words, just because a thought comes into your mind doesn't mean that it's a sin. It's whether you start to think about that and then start to act on it that makes it a sin. Yes? So we've got to understand that. God understands. Jesus has been, and whether it's the physical uh, longings, whether it's the emotional longings, and uh, he, he, he's been there. Uh, he's, he knows what it is to hurt and to have anguish and to have fatigue and to have loneliness um, and, and, and to be angry and those, and those things. And Hebrews 4 talks about that. Jesus understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same temptations we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and grace to help us when we need it. And so that brings us to the fourth principle, which is we need to very practically direct our attention elsewhere. We have got to learn to change our focus. We have got to learn to change the channel. We've got to learn to look somewhere else. We've got to learn the, 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 that we can change what we're thinking about. Because if you try to think about some... So, for example, it's like, uh, it's like me saying to myself, saying, okay, um, <clears throat> I, I need to give up chocolate. I've got to give up chocolate. I'm not going to give in to chocolate. If I just... Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to have chocolate near me. I'm not going to buy any chocolate. I'm not going to... What am I doing? All I'm doing is thinking about... So what am I doing? I'm actually reinforcing it. Yes? So the more I think about chocolate, so whenever I see a bar of chocolate, instead of giving in the bar, I look to something else. You've got to just, just look away, look to something else, think about something else. And by doing that, it, it can enable you to be able to get over uh, the, uh, the, the temptation. Yes? In other words, you've got to change the direction of your thoughts by trying to uh, t keep telling yourself to not think about it. It's a bit like what... Um, Years ago, I heard about what we call the white rabbit syndrome, which in all fairness is what they do is they send the children out into the garden to play a game. And what the game is, is that they have got to catch the white rabbit, but they can only ever see the white rabbit while ever they're not thinking about the white rabbit. So if they actually think about white rabbit, they'll never see it. But if they don't think about a white rabbit, they, what are you all thinking about now? A white rabbit, aye, aye, yes. So what happens is the kids can't go because they're trying to not think about a white rabbit. And so the more you're not trying not to think about something, the more you actually will think about it. Uh, it's, a, it's a principle in, in psychology. In other words, temptation always follows a predictable pattern, yes? It gets your attention, then it arouses your emotions, and then you act on it, yes? It always starts in the mind. It starts with that thing. Uh, James 1 says this, Temptation is the pull of your own evil thoughts and wishes. These evil thoughts lead to evil actions. It's in us. We capture every thought, 2 Corinthians says, and make it obey Christ. That's not easy. If it was easy, we'd all do it, wouldn't we? But it's not easy. It has to be learned. It has to be practiced. It has to become a regular part of your life. You've got to constantly be training your mind to look elsewhere when there's, some, when there's temptation, to think differently, to think on something else, yes? So I don't know if you notice, but nowhere in the Bible are you told to resist temptation. You are told to resist temptation the tempter, you are told to resist the devil, but you're not told to resist temptation. So that's what we've got to do. We've got to resist the devil because he is the one that is trying to, uh, to cause it. So if you try to resist the temptation and think, no, 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 I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it, guess what you're going to do? It's like people that grow up and say, I'm not going to be my, like my dad or I'm not going to be like my mom. And, and what happens is they, they keep telling themselves and then what do they end up being like? The very person that they said they didn't want to be like. 
because they're focused on that. It's been the focus of their life. I see that over and over again. Yes? Amen. So if it gets your attention, it's got you. So that's why you've got to change where your focus goes. Um, I remember hearing about racing drivers. That when, they, when they're going down the track and they're coming to a corner, they don't look straight ahead. You know, they're not looking at what's there. They're trying to look around the corner. They have to look where they're going because they will follow where they look. And so you will always follow what's got your attention. Whatever's, whatever, it, uh, you know, and it, 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 different things grab our attention. Different things catch us. Um, and some things can be just so unaware, you're not expecting it. Can just, and and you, 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 you kind of feel like a goner. Um, all because of something small. In other words, what, wherever your attention is, whatever you're looking at, whatever you're focusing on, whatever you're thinking about, has you. So the way to win a temptation, the way to change the negative patterns in your life is to change your thinking. In other words, it always starts as an inside job. It starts from the inside out. Unless you change your thinking, you can never change your behavior. Yes, you've got to do uh, the, the, the inside job. And lastly, and probably one of the uh, most important aspects of this on a very practical level is you've got to develop wise and godly friendships of people who will help you along the way. There are some things in our lives that are too big for us to handle on our own. We have tried to handle on our own, but we can't handle them on our own. And obviously that's the reason why so many organizations exist, um, that because uh, they're trying to help people uh, that, that are going through some big uh, uh, um, you know, patterns in life that they've got into a pattern and they want to get out of it, but they can't get out of it on their own. And as a result of that, they, they, if they will have, the, have the, uh, the wisdom to connect with someone else that can help them, it can transform their lives. And so, of course, uh, Moses that, uh, that we deal with a lot, that's what the principle is, is they connect them, get, come alongside people and help them. I want to say to you, we all, wherever we are, need friends. We need people. We're not designed by God. Uh, we're not wired by God to be loners. We are designed by God to do life together. We need friendships. Now, you need people in your life who, who you can trust, people who you can be confide in, people who you can just kind of in, in ways tell them anything and they won't judge you. Uh, they'll help you. Yes, they'll hold you accountable. They'll speak into your life. But you know that they love you. They have your best interests. That have get you. Don't need a lot. You only need one or two, or three, or four. Um, and if you really examine five, maybe. But you don't need a lot. And and so find a support group. Hopefully, in your connect group, you can get some friends. That's why we do a connect groups because you're supporting each other. You're there for each other, um, and you can connect. Now you won't be able. You don't share everything with everybody in the group, but you do find one or two people that you can share with. And, and so I have people in my life that I can share with and, uh, and they share with me. We have that, uh, that, 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 that relationship to be able to do it. And that's where you're able, and that's where you're able to, just to be open and there's no thing. You can pray for one another. You can just help one another through this. And it's amazing how when you have confessed something, it brings an opportunity for release. <clears throat> so unless, wherever you conceal, um, <clears throat> you're never going to, um, to, to be able to uh, get healthy. But if you will reveal it, then you can be on the, uh, the healing path. And so I believe that's what God wants us uh, to do today. Ephesians 4 talks about that, that two are better than one because together, if one falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone and falls, there is no one to help him. We have got to learn that without uh, disclosure, there will never be closure on some of the areas in our life. And I just want to finish with this text, powerful text that Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. No temptation that comes your way is beyond what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. 
He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through. In the NIV, it talks about that God will always provide a way out. Whatever it is and whatever the situation, God will provide a way out. You've just got to ask him for it and be willing to take that path. Because if you will, it will change your life forever. Maybe today, I'd appreciate if you get your Connect card, um, but maybe today you have an area and you'd love for us to pray and to support you. Or you're saying, I want to connect in a support group, or I'd like a counselor, um, or I'd just like to, uh, uh, you'd like to know more about the church. Whatever it might be today, get your Connect card, just fill it in uh, so that we can hear from you. Um, because when you say some things on here and you just put something, you might just say, I've got an issue, I'd ask you to pray for me that I can get the right help. Uh, we don't need to often know what it is, but we just want to be able to pray with you and to know something, and particularly. Um, If you're with your Connect Group leader, share with your Connect Group leader so that he or she can help you in this process. Amen? It's it's valuable. If you will do these things, it will change your life. Father, I thank you that, Lord, that you have given us the keys in your word so that we can live a transformed life. We recognize, Lord, that we are not perfect And we recognize that this side of heaven, we never will be. But we thank you, Lord, that when we allow you to mold us and when we work with your principles, the Lord, that you bring changes in our life, that you change areas of our life and we are able to walk in victory. We're able to walk in freedom. We're able to help others in that area. And so I pray today, Lord, for every single person that's here, for those that are online, For those who will watch later, I pray, Lord Jesus, that there would truly be victory in every single life. I pray, Lord, today for those that have never given their life to you, that today they would say yes to to you and recognize that with your help, all things are possible. And that which seems impossible, that which seems that you've tried everything, today... If you will put your hand in the hand of God, if you will say yes to God, if you will say yes to Jesus, you will have a very different uh, uh, future ahead. All things are possible. Father, I pray today that you would just, Lord Jesus, enable every single person here today to be able to grasp these principles that each one of them, all five principles working together become a path upon which we can walk. Help us, Lord, not just to have one aspect or two aspects, but Lord, help us to implement all five so that we can truly, Lord Jesus, live in victory in every area of our life. We thank you, Lord, for those that you've connected us with. We thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you for those that we can walk the walk of faith, the walk of life with those that will pray with us, those that will love us and care for us. I pray today, Lord, that there will be some strong bonds formed, Lord, in each person today for your glory and your praise, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen.